So you've got no money, but you want to learn Biblical Greek. Is it possible to learn Biblical Greek for free? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you the things that you're going to need and the best free resources of each of those things you're going to need and one or two things that you might want to know along the way. Hi, I'm Daryl Berling from Master New Testament Greek, and I help people with the tools, habits, and systems to master the Greek of the New Testament. If you're interested in learning Biblical Greek, then hit the subscribe button and the notify bell, and don't forget to like this video, because that really helps me out as well. Now, maybe you've been laid off, and you've got a bit of time up your hands, but you don't have any money, or maybe it's just that you don't like spending money on learning things. I don't know. Whatever it is, is it possible to learn Biblical Greek for free? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video. And I'm going to tell you, I hope, and help you to see that all the resources that you need to learn Biblical Greek can be attained for absolutely no charge whatsoever. However, there are a couple of things which I'll talk about at the end, which you can't get even for free which are going to be real issues for you unless you think about those in advance. But I'll tell you about those at the end. But let's talk about those five things you're going to need if you want to learn Biblical Greek. The first one is you're going to need some step-by-step -step breakdown of how the language works. This is what a beginning Greek grammar is. And there are some available on the internet, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Not only that, but even if you've got those sorts of resources, you're going to want some sort of explanation. Most people can't learn Greek just by reading a book. You need someone to teach you. You need explanations. And that's where some helpful videos and even audio recordings can be really helpful. I'm going to talk about that as well. You're also going to need something to help you with vocabulary. Vocabulary is the number one thing that is going to be the difference between reading Greek and just sort of picking your way through the text using Bible software or books. I want to encourage you to read the text, which means I want to encourage you to learn the vocabulary and learn it well. And there are two things here that you need. You're going to need a lexicon so you can look words up, and you're going to need some sort of way of learning the words by memory so that you don't need to look them up anymore. I'll talk about those in just a minute. On top of that, you're also going to want to learn how the word in its context is inflected and what that means, which means you're going to need to learn how to pass words. So I'm going to talk about how you can do that in just a moment. And then finally, you're going to want to actually read some text. So you want to get some actual Greek New Testaments or texts that you can get for free so that you can start reading through those. So let's get into the first of those, which is the grammars. You're going to need a grammar. And there are two that I recommend that you take a look at on the internet today. Now, the first one is one that is widely used and in fact has been really the most used grammar probably leading up to the 1980s or even 1990s. And that is Machen's New Testament Greek for Beginners. This was published in I think around the 1920s, 1910s, 1920s, somewhere in there. And therefore it's in the public domain. You can go and download a PDF of this or read it on archive.org using the link that I'll mention below. And in fact, that's the point. Everything I'm about to mention, I'll leave a link to it in the description below so that you can go and get a copy of it for yourself. So Machen's New Testament Greek for Beginners is well respected. In fact, even today, some Bible colleges and seminaries are still using this and teaching from it. So you should be able to get not only the grammar, but also some good resources that go with that. And I'll talk about some of those in just a minute. There's also a new one called Biblical Greek Beginning the Adventure. And this is another free one. It's actually quite modern. This is a very modern grammar designed really for people in the mission field to help them to learn Greek so that they can translate the text into the language which they are targeting on the mission field. But this is available free of charge and I encourage you to take a look at it below as well. You can get this as a PDF or as a Word document or you can view it online. Secondly, you're going to want to get some sort of explanations. And the best explanations I know of on the internet are actually from Bill Mounts, the author of The Basics of Biblical Greek. You can go to BillMounts.com and I'll leave a link below and you can find all of his video lectures complete with PowerPoint presentation and the audio that you can download and listen to as well. All of that totally free of charge. Well, I was just going through an editing and I found that when I was talking about this, I was talking about BillMounts.com. Now, there is some really helpful stuff on BillMounts.com. Really, where you want to go is to BiblicalTraining.org and that's where you get the free videos and the audio and so on. So I'm going to, I'll show you that, uh, but I'm talking about BillMounts.com, but uh, you know what to do. Just kind of pretend I'm talking about 
biblicaltraining.org. There's lots of other good stuff on biblicaltraining.org as well, so it's worth looking at. Anyway, I'm going to send you back to it. So even if you're not using the basics of Biblical Greek, you can still select the video that is most related to the section that you're working through, and you can listen to his excellent introductions and explanations of those free of charge. The other thing you can do too is you can go to YouTube. YouTube has loads of people teaching through a variety of different grammars with their own PowerPoint decks. So I encourage you just to go on to youtube.com, which is probably where you're watching this, and just do a search for beginning Greek and you know, see what pops up, maybe type in beginning Greek Machen and see if someone is teaching through Machen or whatever other grammar you happen to be using. Now, if you're past the beginning Greek stage and you're into the more intermediate stage or you're just sort of starting to get into reading biblical Greek, having done the beginning Greek stage, then I recommend that you subscribe to the Daily Dose of Greek by Dr. Rob Plummer. This is a fantastic resource and what he does is every day of the week he goes through a verse and explains all of the words in it, what they mean, how they're relating to one another, passing them and talking about the different constructions that you see so that you can start to put together how the language is actually working. Now you can start with easy books like 1 John and right now he's going through the Gospel of John. So you can work through this at your own pace. You can do one a day, you can do more than that and if you have managed to catch up to where Dr. Plummer is, of course he will send you a new one every day. There's also an app for your phone uh, that you can download as well. So dailydoseofgreek.com, go in there, put your email address in and subscribe to the mailing list and that way every day you'll get one of these emailed to you. So once you've got an explanation down, the next thing you're going to want to do is to hit the like button because that's going to help me out and tell me that this video is helpful. Okay, that was a little cheesy but it's still helpful and I'm really thankful that you're watching this video. Now I mentioned before that you're going to want to learn the vocabulary and you're going to need two things. You're going to need a lexicon and you're going to need a passing app. In terms of lexicons, the best one you can get totally free of charge is the Abbott Smith lexicon. This lexicon takes you through every word in the Greek New Testament and provides you with a short succinct description of what that word means as well as variations in meaning one from one context to another within the New Testament. This is a great resource and in fact is also still being used by many seminaries and colleges today when they're teaching Greek because it's free and you can get cheap print versions as well and so it's worthwhile right so that's George Abbott Smith's lexicon of the Greek New Testament and I'll leave a link to the archive.org version of that below you're also going to want to learn the vocabulary and I want to encourage you not to write out vocabulary on flashcards the main reason for that is that over time it's just not going to scale to a lot of words okay it's all right for learning the basics but if you're going to want to learn more than just the basic 330 words then you're going to want something a little more robust so there are two apps that I encourage you to use. The first is Quizlet.com, which is just a website, and you can jump on there and learn vocabulary for mounts. It has all the vocabulary for Machen and for a bunch of other grammars as well. This is a these are all community contributed. So people can just go on, in fact, you can create yours for whatever grammar you're using, and then share them with the community. So Quizlet.com, and there is a mobile app, but I believe for the synchronizing, you need to pay a fee for that. But if you do want to use your mobile app and you don't want to pay for synchronization, then you might want to consider Anki. Now there are about nine or 10 different apps that call themselves Anki. The one I'm referring to is AnkiWeb.net. This has got an app for your Mac, for your PC, for your mobile device, and you can synchronize them all using a free AnkiWeb.net account as well. You can also use these to import any text files. So again, do a search on the internet for vocabulary, machin, see if you can find any text files or even Excel files will be fine, and then to convert them to text files, import them into Anki, and then start using them. This also has the benefit that it allows you to do spaced repetition, which means that you can learn the word, and then it's going to ask you to review that word every, you know, with increasing variations between the times, or shrinking variations, depending on whether you get the word right or wrong. AnkiWeb.net, well worth trying out. Now, in addition to that, you want to get a passing app, and the best one out there for free, in my opinion, is MasterGreek.com. Not related to me and MasterNTGreek.com, but it just happens to be called MasterGreek.com. Now, I did a review of all passing apps, uh, and complete with some screenshots and things like that, uh, a little while ago. I'll leave a link to that in the description card just up above here, so you can go check that out as well. This is a, a great free website that you can use to 
test passing. To use it, all you have to do is go to mastergreek.com, select the options you want to use. You can pass just uh, verbs, or you can pass just nouns, or participles, or whatever you want to do, and then you can just start going through it. It works great on your mobile device, it works great on your web browser, on your computer, whatever works. And it's also going to give you feedback when you get something wrong to help you to learn where you went wrong so you can get it right next time. So that's mastergreek.com, great app for practicing your passing. Once you're a little more advanced, the thing you might want to do is to actually practice those words in the wild. And if you wanted to do that, a great way to do that is to use Murray Vass's brand new Greek quiz. Now every day he's releasing a little quiz of a verse of 1 John. At the moment it's 1 John. I'm assuming after 1 John he's going to go on to something else. But what it's going to do is you go to that site, it's going to show you there the Greek and of whatever verse it is you're working on, he's going to ask you questions like, what is the tense form? What is this word from? Uh, which one of these words is translated incorrectly? And you get to use a multi-choice interface to choose which one it is. And at the end of the quiz, it's going to give you a quick percentage you got correct. And you can do this for as many verses as he happens to have up there. And I believe he's doing a new verse every day. So this is brand new, but well worth taking a look at, particularly once you pass that first stage of beginning Greek. Now once you're into that stage where you're wanting to actually read the text for yourself, you're going to want to get a Greek New Testament. Now the SBL Greek New Testament is available free of charge. The SBL Greek New Testament is published by the Society of Biblical Literature. And so this is designed to be made so that you can download it in a Word or a PDF format or whatever form you want and use it however you want. You can print it, you can pull it apart, you can whatever you need. And this has led to some interesting uses of it. One of those is gntreader.com. gntreader.com gives you the SBL Greek New Testament and then it allows you to choose the chapter you're looking at so you can just see the chapter you're interested in. You can then click on a word and on the other side it will give you the passing for that word, the lexical form for the word, and it's going to give you a definition based on George Abbott Smith's lexicon that I mentioned earlier on as well. This is a great way to sort of get stuck in and start getting into the text. However, I want to encourage you not to become too dependent on tools like this. You make sure that before you click on a word, you actually think through what is this word. Have your best guess, then click on it. That way you won't lose the, all the hard work you put into learning Biblical Greek. Don't let that happen to you. Think about what you're reading before you use the tools. Now, if you wanted to get this printed, I've actually created a free version of the Greek New Testament that you can download. It's one and a half point spacing, it's larger text, it's got wide margins, it's a small form factor, and you can get that printed off and bound in whatever format you want. There is one more text that I want to draw to your attention, that is the Berean Greek New Testament. This is a fairly new Greek text, and it's designed, just like the SBL Greek New Testament, to be downloaded and to be shared for free. And you can download this in Word or in the PDF format, whatever you prefer. It's based on the 1904 Nestle Aland edition, and it's been updated based on later critical editions. But essentially, it's a standalone Greek text designed to be used for free. You'll find that at greekbible.org and I'll leave a link to that in the section below as well. And if you want to take it to the next step and listen to the text being read, you can get the Greek New Testament in audio format free of charge as well. A few years ago, a lady by the name of Marilyn Femister went through and read the entire Greek New Testament and saved those up to the internet. Now, the original site has been taken down, but archive.org still has a copy of all of those audio files, and you can go and listen to those anytime you want. Now, these use Erasmian pronunciation. Uh, there are other tools, I believe, for non-Erasmian pronunciation, but this is free, and it's well worth listening to. If you want to listen to the New Testament being pronounced in Erasmian pronunciation, I recommend this resource, and you'll find a link to that, just like everything else, in the links below. So here's the question. If all these tools are available for free, why is it that more people don't learn Biblical Greek? Certainly, some people are able to take these tools and to learn Biblical Greek with them. Let's just say, yes, there's some people who can do that. But the vast majority of people, you give them all the free stuff in the world and they still can't learn Biblical Greek. Why is that? Well, let me give you four quick reasons why that is the case, in my personal opinion. The first one is this. There is so much information. There are so many people teaching stuff and there are so many tools that honestly, you're just going to get confused. 
you're going to try one tool and it's not going to do what you want it to do or you're not going to get the results. So you're going to go somewhere else and try another tool and try and get the results from that place instead. And you're not going to get them from there either. And then this person disagrees with this person and it's just going to be confusing. This is one of the challenges of having a market or, or, or something you're trying to learn where there's loads of information available. There's just so much and really just too much to be able to really take it all in. And you're going to be confused. It's just hard. And that brings me really to the second element that makes it hard to learn Biblical Greek. And that is that honestly, it's just different to learning a lot of other skills. You can go and take a history class. You can go and learn macrame. You can take a, you know, a underwater basket weaving class, whatever, right? You can go and do these things and they will give you a foundation pretty quickly in how to do stuff. It's a technique or it's a piece of information and you bolt it onto what you already know and away you go. Language is nothing like that. There are so many different elements to it and they're different from one language to another and frankly, most people really don't even understand how their own language works, let alone have to work out how another language works. And so there's just a sheer quantity of information that makes it really hard to learn the biblical languages. And so learning Greek is not like learning many of the other things. It's not like Old Testament history. It's not like learning how the gospels were formed. It's not like, you know, uh, historical criticism. It's not like hermeneutics. It's different, right? It's just different. And because of that, the third reason is that it takes a different set of skills and study habits to what you're going to use when you learn other things. And so when you come to learning the biblical languages, you have to employ new techniques, new tactics, and most importantly, you're going to have to put in place long-term study habits that are going to allow you to develop the knowledge and the skills over a period of time. And on top of that, like many other skills, it's going to take practice to improve it. And so that means that learning a biblical language and learning biblical Greek is not a short-term mission, but a long-term mission. And honestly, we live in a society that values the short term over the long term, which means that for most people, they're not going to have the tenacity or the discipline or the habits or the routines that are going to support that long term learning. And the fourth reason goes with that. And that is if it's going to take, you know, two, three, four years to learn the biblical language to a reasonably de high degree of fluency, then you're going to struggle along the way with motivation with the why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this on a day in and day out basis? And that's where books like this one, Greek for Life, are so critical because they are designed to help you to keep going, to give you the strategies and the resolve and the reason. This is the reason why history books on the Reformation and things like that are so helpful when it comes to learning Biblical Greek because we need that extra motivation, that reason to keep going. And this is why because of these four reasons, you're really going to want to have more than just free tools. You need a community, and ideally you're going to need an individual, someone who can go with you, work through this with you, follow you through the process of learning, continue to motivate you, coach you, encourage you along the way, and other people who are walking that same path who are also struggling with exactly the same things that you are. You need this kind of community, these kinds of people around you to be able to do that. And unfortunately, in most churches today, we just don't have that. In most churches, you'll be lucky to find one person, never mind two, who will be interested in learning the biblical languages. And so this makes learning the language very, very difficult. It's not about free. Free is great, but it's just going to be really hard on your own unless you are one of those very unique people who either have an extraordinary amount of self-discipline or, on the other hand, have a natural aptitude for toward the languages. For the rest of us, we have to work at it. And But let me just say, as a result of that, it is worthwhile. The clarity, the confidence that comes from that clarity, the what that does to your own vitality and spiritual life, and how that makes you more effective and more capable when it comes to serving the Lord and serving the church. Those four things make it worthwhile. So take advantage of the free material and the free resources that are out there. 
but don't underestimate the value of having a community and having people around you who can really encourage you and coach you and keep you going. So let me ask you, what's your favorite uh, free resource for learning or reading the New Testament in Biblical Greek? Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know. I'd love to hear from you there as well. So if you're interested in learning Biblical Greek, I encourage you to go to masterntgreek.com roadmap, download your free roadmap to mastery and start taking the steps that you need to take toward learning fluency in the biblical language. Be aware that it's going to take some time, but it is well worthwhile. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button. That really helps me out. And until the next video, keep taking small steps toward mastery, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. We'll see you then.